Welcome to Adobe Bridge 2019. And I'm sure every person, the first time they open up their program, they went right into preferences because, man, is that an exciting place to go into. So today we're going to take a look at the preferences inside Adobe Bridge. So we're going to come up here and drop down. It's Command K to preferences. Now, this is set up as default and will work perfectly fine without ever going into it. But if you do use the program and you want to change the way it works, this is where you're going to go in there to kind of change and do some certain settings to make it work. Now, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. There's even a couple things I'm not even quite sure what they do. But I'm just going to show you some options that you have to change the way that Adobe Bridge works. So the first is this little behavior menu. So when you connect a camera, it's going to automatically launch the Adobe Photo Downloader. So what does that mean? So whenever you put an SD card or connect your camera to your computer, it's going to come up here and automatically launch this Photo Downloader. Meaning, you know, the only reason you would put an SD card in your camera is because you want to do something with it. You should never work off an SD camera. So what you're going to want to do is take the images off that, put them on a hard drive. So that's going to automatically launch that. This is a great thing to check if you use Adobe Bridge. No, I don't use Adobe Bridge. So I'm not going to check that because I don't want it to automatically launch when I stick a camera um, SD card or a compact flash card in my computer. So the next one is to double click edits uh, in camera raw in bridge. Now I want to use camera raw going to Photoshop, so I'm not going to do that. So this, if you did want to double click edits and send them into camera raw settings in bridge, you could do that there. The next is to bring up the loop. And if you wanted to use this method to bring up the loop, you could easily do that. The next is advanced. And, and these are just some general things. The main one here is this the monitor size previews. So what that's doing is if you have like a 5K monitor, it can generate a preview for your 5K monitor. But if you only have a 1080p monitor, there's no sense in generating a 5K preview because all you can really visibly see on your monitor is 1080p. So it's going to limit that size. So cache is is basically in a computer your computer remembering st stuff or tasks that you do a lot so in this case what it's doing is it's it's a lot of times it's remembering um, just information as far as previews and stuff like that and you'll notice down here purge cache when it's older than 30 days I would probably make this longer um, usually I don't finish working on stuff in 30 days sometimes so I could make it two months three months however long you want but basically after that time it's gonna purge that cash so it doesn't remember it you basically don't want to build it up too long so that you have tons and tons and tons of cash and it slows down your computer the one up here compact on exit right here it's just kind of remembering stuff and it's selected to keep hundred percent previews in the cache this is what I would do I would never get rid of that but if you wanted to remove that you would just click here so this is your cache management so this will allow you to purge it so if you wanted to just completely remove everything you could click on it here if you want to compact it you could just click on it there it's kind of like a little button to do stuff like that you can also move it to a different location if you wanted so file types so what this does is for instance here Notice we have this Canon RAW file. Whenever there's a Canon RAW file, hey, I want to open up in Adobe Photoshop. If for some reason you wanted to open this up in Illustrator, which wouldn't work, you could select this and make it go to Illustrator or whichever program you have. So one thing I have is an AI file, an Illustrator file. I don't have Illustrator on this computer. So if I'm opening an Illustrator file, I'm going to want to make sure and change this from Illustrator to Adobe Photoshop. So you have your interface and this is just changing the way it looks. You can click on this and you can see it looks different. You can change your text size as well. So keywords, I'm not going to get into this if you don't know what this means, but this delimiter keys. So I actually, you use this in code replacement and photo mechanic and stuff like that. But if you do 
use it, you'll understand what this means, and this is where you select which one you use. Labels, so just like when you star an image, that's one through five, one is one star, two is two stars, like that. But then you have six, seven, eight, nine, and those are the colors that you see, but it also has a word next to it. So like I would never use select, second, approve, review, it's just not how I work. So if I wanted to change this and make it select, all you have to do is type the word in and it will give you something different. So media cache, so this is just remembering like audio or video cache and how it's gonna work. So you can change that. Metadata, so in your metadata files, what you want displayed. So obviously right now I have everything selected. If you don't want series description, you can just uncheck it and then you won't see that anymore. Output, so when you're outputting stuff like do you want to view a PDF after export? If you do, you would select that. I probably wouldn't. Preserve embedded uh, color profile is kind of an, a good one, especially if you shoot JPEG. Let's say you shoot JPEG in Adobe 98 and you are going to want to save that color profile. You don't want to not import it or use it. Now, if you shoot raw at this point in Adobe Bridge, you actually don't have a color profile because it's just a raw file that would be done later in Adobe Camera Raw. So it doesn't really matter, but you would definitely want to preserve the embedded color profile if you had one. Then we can come down here to playback. And so playback is has to do with video and, and some other things. What, what frame rate you want to play stuff back at. So obviously if you have it down at four, a frame rate per second of four, your video is going to be real sketchy and choppy and stuff like that. But the higher you raise it, the more memory it's going to take. So just so you know, um, where that's available you can kind of fiddle around and play with it and see what looks good for you okay startup scripts there are some startup scripts here to automatically run an application if you need to use them or want to use them they're right here I don't think most people use them thumbnails so this is just your thumbnails do not process lar files larger than a thousand megabytes you can set that to whatever you want prefer thumbnail generation over preview generation I would do preview generation basically the thumbnail generation is the little thumbnail down here that you see and the preview is bigger so by selecting this you're gonna select a better quality preview over the thumbnail it's also gonna slow your computer down and things aren't gonna work as fast down here we just have extra information that you see. So you can see I'll hit date created and bam, just like that date created is shown. So whatever you would want, you can come in here and change it. So if you wanted to know your size, you can change it to size. So whatever is available to select, you can click it and it will show down there if that's what you want. It also is pretty cool that you can kind of hover and see that stuff as well. Well, that's about it. Hopefully this was not too boring. But that's what's inside preferences and the different areas and aspects that you should take a look at. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below and don't forget to subscribe.